Whoa, okay, that was, that was pretty cool. Hey everyone, it's Steve here from CG Geek, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to create some awesome looking wireframe transition effects in Blender. So after countless requests on how I did the wireframe transition effect in my intro, as well as in other videos now that I've posted, I've decided it's high time that I did a tutorial covering this effect. And now with Blender 2.8, it's easier than it's ever been before because we can use Eevee and do it all in real time. So I hope you guys are excited for this video. All you have to do is download Blender 2.8 to be ready to go. And let's jump right in. I also want to quick thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. With Skillshare, you can get smart quick, learning anything you want from talented professionals, and do it all for just $8 a month with their extremely affordable yearly subscription. So maybe you had this really cool short film or video project you wanted to create but had no experience video editing or doing visual effects. Well, that's where Skillshare comes in to save the day with tons of courses on video editing, color grading, special effects, and so much more. Like I said, Skillshare has courses on basically anything you can think of, and if you sign up with the link in the description below, you can get two free months of Skillshare. But don't wait, as this special promotion is only available to the first 500 viewers to use that link in the description. So sign up now and get those two free months and start learning today. All right, so starting over in Blender 2.8, we're gonna be using the low poly character that we created in my previous tutorial. And if you haven't created this character yourself, I will include a free download link in the description for you guys so you can follow along exactly with this tutorial. And if you're interested in any of the other finished tutorial files on the channel, you can get all the downloads over on my Patreon page for just $3 a month and get access to everything I've created on the channel. So what we're gonna be doing with this model is using a combination of different modifiers and keyframing to get the transition wireframe effect coming across our model to reveal it. So I hope you guys are excited because I'm using some modifiers and stuff that I haven't used at all on the channel yet, some pretty new stuff. So starting off, what we're gonna have to do is first apply a vertex group to the model that we want the transition on. So I'm just gonna tap into edit mode, select our whole character here. And then over in the sidebar, you're gonna wanna be in the object data tab right there and just go plus on the vertex groups and then assign the model to that group you just made. And that's all you have to do for that. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna have a separate object controlling the vertex group intensity on our model. So we'll go ahead and add an object for that now. I'm just gonna go Shift A, and I like to use an Icosphere for this. So go ahead and add Mesh, Icosphere, and we'll just scale this up quite a bit. As you can see right now, this model is affecting these shadows and stuff on our scene. We don't want that, so we're just gonna go over to our object data right here, and then under viewport display, we're just going to change it from textured to wire. Okay, so we're gonna scale it up to be about the same height of our model there. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our mesh here and we're gonna go to the modifiers tab and we're gonna add a new modifier. This is going to be the vertex weight proximity modifier. So you might have never used this modifier before, but lucky for you, you're gonna to get to try it today and it's a really cool modifier. So what you're gonna start off by doing is under the vertex group here, we're gonna choose that group we just created and then we're gonna choose the targeted object that we want to be editing the vertex group with. So that object is gonna be the icosphere that we just added in there. And with that said, I like to change the distance from object to geometry. And now we can already see this working. If we jump over to weight paint, you can see that the area of the mesh that's closer to the icosphere has no vertex weight applied to it. And the area on the opposite side is full. So if I was to grab our icosphere here and move it a bit closer, if we went back to weight paint mode on our object, you can see that it's editing the amount of weight paint on our object. And that's exactly what we want. Now what I wanna do is I wanna affect the lowest and highest to kind of pull that value into be a tighter margarine. And as you can see, as I edit these values, we kind of take away the fadiness and make it a sharper cutoff between the fall off of the weight paint and no weight paint. So what I wanna do actually is I wanna give the lowest just a little bit of a higher value. This basically inverts it. So we have everything that this area is touching with the icosphere, having the weight paint and everything that's not touching no weight paint. And what you can do is you can take these values down a bit to bring it a little bit closer to your icosphere. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the highest value to one and the lowest to 1.1. And that just gives me a good amount of radius around our icosphere affecting the mesh. So I'm just gonna kind of move our icosphere now so the line of cutoff is right around the middle of our mesh just so it's kind of easy to work with now. 
And then I'm gonna grab our mesh here and go to weight paint. And you can see that that's, that's pretty good. We can move it just a little bit more. All right, so now it's time for the wireframe effect. So with our icosphere affecting the vertex group, what we can do now is if we grab our mesh here and add a new modifier, the wireframe modifier, let me see where it is, right here at the bottom. And you can see that makes a very cool wireframe of our character here. And I'm just gonna collapse that down for now. We can change the thickness a little bit if we wanted to, and you get just a nice sort of wireframe effect there. I'm gonna go with a 0.03. And now to have the vertex group effect where the wireframe is basically visible and where it's not, all we have to do is under the thickness, we give that the group as well of the same vertex group that's being edited by the icosphere. And you can see now that when I move the icosphere, it kind of appears and disappears with it. Now the other thing I like to do is I like to cut the icosphere in half. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode, rotate it 90 degrees so we have this line straight down the middle. And now I can just hit that button right there so I can see the vertices behind the mesh. And now I'm just going to tab into edit mode and delete everything on the right side there. And then tab back out of edit mode. So now with this mesh, you can see as I move across, it's making it invisible and then making it appear behind it. This is working, but it's basically working opposite than what I want. So now all you have to do is grab your wireframe and if you hit that little button there, it inverts the group. And now you can see that everywhere it's touching, it's visible. And as it moves over, it's invisible behind it. So pretty cool. And then this can also be affected, the amount that's visible can be affected by our vertex proximity here. So if I take this down a little bit, on both these values, you see the amount of vertices that are visible as it moves over goes down. And that's pretty cool. Another thing you can kind of play around with is if you change it to edge or face, you can get some different results. You might want to go with face as this will give you a little bit more wireframe visible in your animation. So with this setup, you can see it's already quite a bit of fun to play around with. And if I was to animate the icosphere, I could have the wireframe moving over this mesh, but we also want it to be revealing the object underneath it and not just showing the wireframe. So what you're gonna do for that is we're gonna grab our mesh that we have the wireframe applied to, and we're gonna hit Shift D to duplicate it. And on the duplicated one, you can see up here we have two of them now. I'm just gonna turn off visibility on the first one so it's not getting in the way by hitting that eyeball there. And now what I can do is I can delete the wireframe off of our second mesh here. And instead of using the wireframe, we're going to use a new modifier, and this one is going to be the mask modifier. So go ahead and add the mask modifier in and just grab that vertex group as well. And now with the mask modifier there, you can see that it's already making portions of our mesh hidden. Now the thing is, this has to be right behind the wireframe. So what I like to do is just set, create a separate icosphere for this object as well. So I'm just gonna hit Shift D and duplicate the icosphere. And for this one, I'm gonna go back to our mesh now. I'm just gonna change the vertex group from the first icosphere to the icosphere.001 that we just duplicated. Now you can see as we move it over, it is making portions of it hidden, but it's not working 100% yet because we want it all to be invisible to start and then visible as it comes over. All we have to do is hit that button to invert the mask, just like we did on the wireframe. And now you can see that if it was moving over, it's making it visible. But you can see as it moves over, it's also hiding the mesh behind it as well, just like the wireframe. To fix this, what we wanna do is grab our mesh here and just increase these values to be something quite a bit larger now. So I'm gonna take these both up to be about a one. And then you have to move this icosphere back a bit, right around here or so. But you can see as it moves over, it reveals the mesh and that value is large enough that nothing is being um, hidden now behind it. If I was to move it even more, you would see it start to hide again but that is plenty to reveal our whole mesh. So that's all we really have to do. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the visibility of our wireframe, and I'm just gonna kind of position this icosphere to be following behind the wireframe. So right around here looks like a good amount of mesh visible behind that wireframe. And now you can just grab your icosphere there, shift grab the one with the wireframe, and go control P and set parent to object. So now all you have to do is animate your wireframe icosphere here, and the one giving the visibility to it follows behind. So to animate this effect now, we're just gonna pull it over to the edge so nothing's visible. We're gonna go ahead and hit I and hit location. And then on our timeline here, you can see we have a keyframe right there. I'm just gonna jump to about frame 100. We'll grab this along the X axis and just move it until everything is visible. So right around there looks good. And then I'll hit I and location one more time. 
And now you can see if we were to play this back as the moves over, our mesh is visible. And if you want it to happen a little bit slower, you can just grab that keyframe there and pull it along your timeline. We'll give it 200 frames. And you can see that as it moves across, we have the wireframe with the mesh appearing behind it. I'll go ahead and move this all the way to the end of our timeline there, just so it happens even slower. And then what I like to do to kind of finish off this effect is grab that wireframe and give it its own material. So over in the material tab here, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a new material. I'm gonna delete the default one there, give it a new one. And this one, I'm gonna choose the surface to be an emission shader. So giving it an emission will kind of make it glow and kind of reflect off the mesh behind it, giving it a really cool look, I think. So what we're gonna do is we'll give it kind of a yellowish color, although you could also go blue, as blue is kind of a cool electric sort of color. So I think I'll go blue. And then just crank the strength up to be something like three or four. And if I unselect everything, go into my EV settings real quick up here and enable bloom just to make the effect even cooler. You can see that as it moves over, we have the wireframe appearing with the mesh appearing behind it. And if you want the mesh to be a little bit closer, all you have to do is grab it and pull it in a little bit more and it will still follow that mesh that is parented to. So you can see here is the effect. The wireframe is coming over it, the mesh is becoming visible and as it comes across, the whole object is revealed and uh, the wireframe goes with it and then disappears at the end. So pretty cool, you can see that the wireframe is still a little bit visible there. So we probably have to move this just a little bit further along the x-axis to make that 100% invisible, add a new keyframe. But there it is guys, I hope you've enjoyed this wireframe transition effect tutorial. It's something that I've been asked to do a lot, like I mentioned earlier, and it's really a cool effect, so I should have done it a long time ago, but now with Blender 2.8 and it being able to all be done in real time with Eevee, it makes it even cooler. So that wraps up the tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed creating some wireframe transition effects. If you're curious how I did it in the beginning with the live footage, basically the exact same method, only I saved it out as render layers. So you would just select the wireframe and turn off the visibility of everything else, render this out with just the wireframe, and then you can do the same thing with the mesh and not the wireframe, render that out, and then just overlay those on your video to make it look like you appeared using it as a mask to kind of reveal the live footage underneath. Pretty simple stuff, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, created some cool transition effects, and uh, had some fun along the way. If you liked the video, leave that thumbs up. If you want to download anything you've seen on the channel, you can do that over on Patreon for just $3 a month. And I'd like to give a big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. You can check them out with the link in the description and get those two free months um, but that's going to do it, guys. I will see you in a future video. Bye-bye.